Hello, I am Dursun Delen. I'm a faculty member at Oklahoma State University. I've uh, been doing analytics and data science for over 30 years as a consultant, as an academic person. So in this very short teaser video, I'll introduce you to NIME Analytics Platform. Why uh, Analytics Platform? Well, I have uh, my own reasons. Actually, I structured them into top 10 list. The ones that I value the most are it's free, it's open source, it's platform agnostic, it's very modular, you can actually represent everything from a very low granularity, it's expandable among others. It's actually very easy to use, that's another good thing. Uh, if you go to Nime.org, go to upper right corner, click on download, you can download and use Nime immediately. So I'm going to go right to Nime and show you a few little things. When you install and launch Nime for the first time, this is the graphical user interface you're going to get. So first thing that you would do is that you would actually start a new model development process. On the left hand side upper corner, you have your local files already created. You have your examples, your connection to the cloud through the hub. And then on the lower uh, left corner, you have your node repository. These are the functions that you drag and drop and create your workflows, your pipelines to create analytics projects. So let's go ahead and create a new one and we'll call it demo or let's just call it nine project. Finish, it opens a brand new model building space for us. The first thing we're going to do is that we need to read the data. So, well, you can actually say Excel reader because I know my data is in Excel. You can go to configure, go to your file folder and then you grab your data. Okay, and then it shows you the description of the data and then you say, OK, the red turns into yellow. You go ahead and execute it, turns into green. That means it's actually pushing the table to the next node. OK, another way that you could read the data is that let me go ahead and delete this. You can directly drag and drop it from your file browser into your model development workspace. It intelligently senses the type of it and creates a, um, uh, a, a node for it. Okay, execute. The next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to use my column filter because I want to take out the variables that I don't use, I don't need to use. So I'm going to go to configure, I'm going to use everything, I'm going to exclude customer ID from my input variable list. I'm going to go ahead and execute it. And then next, I'm going to use a partitioner. I'm going to partition the data into training and testing data sets. Okay. And I'm going to do that randomly, relatively. 70% is going to be training data, remaining 30% test data. I'm going to do it stratified on the um, dependent variable churn. This is a churn data, customer churn data, by the way. Then I'm going to build decision trees. I'm going to do my learning and I'm going to do my prediction. I'm going to use my upper 70% to build the model. I have to define my dependent variable as churn. Um, I'm going to use the default selections. Go ahead and execute it. And then I can look at my decision tree. Okay. And I could potentially go to web browser and then go to hub, hub.nime.com and say color manager because I want it to be a little more colorful. See here I'm going to use the node. Notice what I'm going to do. I'm going to drag the color manager node from browser into my workspace and I'm going to put it right in between the column filter and the partitioner. And then I'm going to define it for the yes and no for the churners. I'm going to go ahead and execute this. Go ahead and execute this and open it. And now all my bar charts are colorful now. Okay. I can maximize this. Can look at how the splits are made. And then I am going to see how good this model actually performs. So I'm going to connect my test data to my decision tree predictor. And then I'm going to connect my model to it going to go to configuration of it. I'm also going to calculate the distribution statistics so that I could actually create a auto seeker later on. I'm going to go ahead and execute. 
see the data that it generates at the end. I have my dependent variable churn, I have the prediction of the churn, and I have the probability of yeses and the noes. Okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and find my scorer to see how good my model predicts on the holdout sample. I am going to drag and connect these two, configure. This is my actual column. This is my predicted column. Execute and open. 85.6% accuracy. That's pretty good. And then I'm going to do my auto secure. I'm going to connect the output into auto C. I'm going to go to definition. I'm going to move everything on the left hand side. I need to pick my dependent variable, churn. Positive column is yes. Then I need the churn of yes on the right hand side to create the single auto secure for the predicted model. Execute and open. Hmm, that's pretty good. 0.897. See, in a very short time, I create a decision tree model for you. Thank you and have a great day.